Hi, I'm Alicia Main. I help animals heal their behavior, health, and end-of-life issues naturally. And I assist them in helping their humans heal their hearts. I am the animal healer. Oh, and did I mention, I'm not usually in the room, state, or country that they're located in when we do our sessions. Join me weekly for Animal Healer TV Live as we explore quantum reality and learn just what's possible in helping animals and humans heal their behaviors, health, and hearts through the quantum energy field. Hey, it's Alicia Main, and this is Connie Freeze. And Connie is the ranch manager at Mustang Maddie's, a student of the Mustang, and an incredible trainer. Connie's got a horse for us to work with today who is still untouchable. And we're going to just see if he's got any issues in his body alignment that are creating some of his not, you know, not wanting to be touched. We don't want to force anything, but we just want to see if body alignment is at the root of it. So Connie, will you share with us who we're working with and what's his background and here I've got Inferno. He still has his tag on, but his name is Inferno. Um, he is a five-year-old gelding that was gathered August 19th, 2020 um, in Nevada from the Shawabe Mountains. And he is part of the tip challenge, but he chose somebody local. This is Leia, um, who will be his person he's been here about 11 days and he had some significant charging and striking with his front feet tendencies more so very stud like behaviors he's not charging anymore he's still swinging his back end a little bit he's still very frustrated scared as he should be have you noticed any kind of body issues is he lame anywhere is he moving no i right? haven't i haven't noticed any lameness at all all right so <laughs> i'm gonna just in sync body assessment with him connie is in ridgeway mm -hmm. colorado i'm in carbondale colorado so we're anywhere between 120 to 140 miles away from each other i have never met inferno i saw one picture of him on the internet that was it i've never touched this horse um, never seen him in person. So let's just see what happens when we do the body assessment. And I know that he's a bit further away. I know we have a little bit of like, you know, Wi-Fi is not as strong, um, which is fine. So Connie's going to be relating to us what she sees um, at, as we go through each step of uh, checking and assessing his body to see if there is any misalignment. So I'm going to take one hand, I'm going to put one thumb on each side of the top of his, actually, usually I start on the top of the head with this horse. He's at literally showing me he's very out of balance at the front of his face. It's not flush across. One side is definitely rotated and being pulled. So I'm actually going to start at the middle of his nose. Okay, now I'm moving up the front of his face. He is definitely compressed on the right side and pushed forward on the left side. So it's the left that I see the white more okay. so, but he has a hard time going to the left. Yeah, which makes sense because that yeah. left side is pulled forward, the right side is pulled back. So he doesn't have a lot of leeway. All right, mm -hmm. so I'm coming up above his eyebrow points, like halfway between his eyebrow points and the top of his head. So that's still the left side is pushed. Now the left. No, yeah, the left side is is got the most tension in it. The right side is pulled back. So I'm just gently adjusting or releasing the fascia there. He's a very handsome horse. Holy moly. Yes. Oh my God. He's, he's gorgeous. <laughs> wow. 
Look, he's actually pretty relaxed right now. Very. Has he been this relaxed yet, or? I, not with me standing in the pen with him, no. Okay. I'm in the pen with him. So now that behind his right ear is really starting to release, so also mm -hmm. underneath his left, like, jaw, uh, deep on the inside, that's starting to release also. So he's getting a lot more flexibility and fluidity in his head. He just turned towards, towards us. us. Very relaxed. Yeah. Really relaxed. Now I'm working underneath his left jaw bone because that's all like really jammed up and tight. Mm -hmm. He said that's weird. <laughs> yeah. Turning left now. That's the yes. time he's turned. Yep. Okay, keep recording that into Leah's phone. Keep recording that. So now I see his left mm -hmm. side. Oh, yeah. Yep, he turned for you. Okay, he just popped his jaw joint open, so that should make it a lot easier. Okay, so now I'm back up on the occiput. That's balanced. Let's go C1. C1 is pushed in a little on the left. It's a little high on the right, so just releasing C1. Wow, is this dude... Yeah, he feels that. Incredible. And, and his head is on the ground, towards the ground. Nose to the ground. You might lay down. Oh you might lay down. Okay. Yep. He, he's laying on his back. I've not... <laughs> Holy moly. That was a good roll. <laughs> that was a good roll, dude. Now we're going to get into his thoracics. So T1. Uh, T1 is okay on the left. It's a little funky on the right. T2 is okay. T3. T3 is high on the right, a little compressed down on the left. So just releasing that. He can feel it. Yeah, he can. He's saying thank his you. His whole face and his head look different. He looks like he just oh, completely yeah. filled out. Yeah, he looks relaxed. It concave. Yeah. For him. Um, confirmation of his head straightened out. Yeah. It's not as concave. Yeah. Or sorry, convex. All right, so we're now we're on T14, which is okay. T15. T15's a little bit out. Uh, it's, it's got a little bit of a torque to it from left to right. So I'm just getting that left side <sighs> ribs back in place. And it's interesting, too, to notice with the mm -hmm. other horses, as he's got certain things out, it's just also interesting to see where they react or respond in their own bodies according to where he's getting adjusted. All right, so now we're going to move into lumbar spine. So lumbar one. Lumbar one's okay. Lumbar two. Lumbar two is not okay. Lumbar two is really out. So on the left, it's high towards the ceiling, rotated forward. And on the right, it's compressed down and rotated back. So there, it's still going into place. Ooh, that was rotated pretty far forward. So now it's just rotating back to come to balance itself. And now it's just going into no. place. There it goes. <laughs> <You> flinched. <laughs> All right, so yeah, what? What? L2 yep. is out really a lot. He's like, what was that? <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, L3. Wow, that whole wave from uh -huh. all the way up the back of his neck to his head. Yeah. Is he kind of looking at you like, what in the? Yes. <laughs> He's like something is touching me and I don't know what's going on, but I feel uh -huh. better. <laughs> yep. Okay. This is very um, helpful with horses that you can't touch. Because you yeah. get in there and you don't want to give them like a sedative to get in there because no. you don't get the proper body response. So this can Absolutely. be very helpful. All right, now I'm gonna come up to his shoulders. Um, so that left shoulder is sort of pulled back and sticking. 
the right shoulder is pulled upward and rotated forward. So, okay. uh, say that again. No, he's looking over here and relaxed. Yes, I'm, like completely shifting his shoulders. I'm totally opening up that left front shoulder somewhat stuck. And that right front shoulder was elevated upward. So mm -hmm. those two are coming back into alignment. And then I'll get to his sternum in a second. Now, I'm not telepathically communicating with him at all. And any like sounds or anything coming out of me are just mine. Okay. They're not his, and I'm not sending him any signals of what he needs to do. So okay. it's, I'm not um, I'm not coaching him or telepathically communicating with him. I'm just working on his body. Okay, now I'm on his hips. So his left hip is a little pulled forward. His right hip is pulled back. So I'm just going to rebalance that for him. Just turned again. Yep. Can you hear? Yeah, I can hear. Okay. And I started watching him turn, and then it kind of froze, and now he's like all the way turned. So I see his right side. Yes. And a big sigh. That was the first big sigh yes. he's given. Big sigh. Good. So now I'm really stretching the left side back, the right side forward, so that it kind of in place. All right, now that's open. All right, so now I'm just gonna put him in a healing grid. He is definitely more relaxed than he was. This has affected him. He has felt the energy and the work that you have done on his body. His face and neck look more balanced and in alignment than they did when we started. His profile totally changed. His, yep, his profile has totally changed. I keep getting him saying thank you. Oh. Look, looking over and saying thank you multiple times. He's got a little nose twist. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think what was most profound was absolutely at the very end of the session, he gave this big sigh. Yeah. It wasn't like the release of a yawn or looking and chewing. It was the only sigh he gave through the whole session, and it mm -hmm. came at exactly the end. As a trainer, Mm -hmm. I want you to be able to share with me, like, look, just with no training at all, just from his body alignment shifting, these, this is what I'm noticing became much easier for him in behavior. Because absolutely, there was no way that this horse was getting out of being able to undo the fear, the trauma, all of that um, in, in a short time. That no, absolutely not. not. And I knew it too. <laughs> I knew. Well, Thank you, Alicia. I always oh, appreciate you. You're always. So this is a very special Mustang. Um, he is not a 90 day Mustang by any means. He's been out of holding for about 50 days. Um, he came here pretty darn frustrated, he would charge and strike his fronts at me um, for the better part of the first few weeks, several weeks. Um, with him, it's been really important to kind of just give him his time to remember that he is a wild being. Right? <laughs> and to go back to the innate remembrance of that is so important for some of these formerly wild horses. Um, what has changed is I've seen a sense of self come back just by giving him freedom and allowing him to make a choice um, on his own terms. And I feel like that's something a lot of trainers give away um, in order to accomplish something. The body is going to affect the behavior regardless. And once Alicia did her session on him and released some of those points in his body, I noticed a complete transformation of 
the way he held himself. Um, a lot of his mannerisms, he's still snorty, but he was less snorty. Um, he was not trying to charge as much. He's curious now, where he was not curious at all. He was very, very closed off prior to the session with Alicia. But mainly, I've, I've noticed a difference in the energy he's exerting towards me because I've given him a level of understanding that he needs to decide on his own terms and in his own time. Um, so all around, it's been a very eye-opening experience with him for now. And as you can see, he's, he's pretty darn relaxed right now. I wasn't able to do this a few weeks ago. He tried to run me out of here. Thanks for watching today's episode of Animal Healer TV. We hope you enjoyed it. We'd love to hear your feedback on what you learned about yourselves and your animals. We'd also love to hear what issues are you dealing with that you'd most like to see on the show. If you'd like to participate in an episode, please see the link below and share with us the issues that you're having with your animals. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and Insta and please feel free to share with your friends. Join us next week for another episode of Animal Healer TV where we will explore quantum reality and see what else is possible in helping animals and humans feel their behaviors, their health, and each other's hearts.